It was during the summer of 1888 that a group of bayheaders decided to build an Episcopal church in town. Until then, these summer residents held services in private homes. And so All Saints was erected on its current site at the corner of Lake Avenue and Howe Street for approximately $2,163. From church records, we know that the first service held at All Saints was on July 7, 1889. If you were among those early worshipers sitting in one of the 51 rows of seats, with women and girls having their heads covered, of course, you would have seen a somewhat different church from the one today. From outside, you would have seen a small box-like structure, our present-day nave minus the narthex, enclosed bell tower, crossing, sacristy, and most everything else. The transept, crossing, and sanctuary, which would extend the church approximately 45 feet to the east toward Lake Avenue, were added around the turn of the century. Wooden walkways were built for sidewalks on Howe Street and as an approach to the church entrance. And in the not yet closed bell tower, a locomotive bell from the Baldwin Locomotive Works in Philadelphia, courtesy of one of our congregants, rang out, calling the faithful to worship. Much of the early church's furnishings were donated by congregants or other sources. The family of John H. Carr gave the brass altar rail, still in use today, a communion set, a brass and oak lectern, and pulpit. Our present altar came around the turn of the 20th century from a parish which closed in Philadelphia. In the early years, All Saints offered Sunday services only during July, gradually expanding the church year to Labor Day, and then from Easter to All Saints Day. During that time, we were served by many clergy, including several bishops, and not surprisingly, we have been enriched by many preaching styles we have encountered through so many visiting clergy, many of whom have been clerical luminaries. Among the first of these great churchmen was Dr. George Martin Christian, the rector of Grace Church, Newark, who served us in July and August for 10 years, beginning in 1891 striking the balance between dignified worship and the relaxed atmosphere of a seaside parish retreat appear to be a time-honored tradition at All Saints. Never was this more apparent than in 1977, when visiting clergy included the Most Reverend and Right Honorable F. Donald Coggin, Archbishop of Canterbury. He officiated on September 4th, wearing shorts and sandals beneath his robe, as many clergy at the Seaside Parish have done over the years. During the summer months, when our attendance has typically increased with the influx of summer visitors, we have added an informal Eucharist at 5.30 on Saturday evenings in the churchyard. This service is especially appreciated by families with young children because Sunday school is not in session during the summer months. During summer months, we also continue to hold services at 8 and 10.15 on Sunday mornings and celebrate Holy Eucharist on Wednesday mornings, as we do throughout the year. Overall, though, we have moved away from high church practices, particularly the use of incense because it has set off the fire alarms at more than one festival service. What is clear from these experiments are two important qualities of this parish, First, while we embrace traditional worship, we are hungry to learn about ourselves and the Christian community, and eager to enrich our understanding of Episcopal worship. Secondly, as any newcomer can see at the exchange of the peace or at hospitality hour following 1015 service, there's a spirit of acceptance and respect for each individual in this parish. This is one dearly kept tradition at All Saints that even Hurricane Sandy could not tear away even when we worshiped in exile for 13 months. According to church records and invoices, in the early years, All Saints rented its organ for $10 each season and paid about $1 to have it shipped along with a piano stool from Philadelphia. A few years later, the rental was replaced by an oak organ given in memory of his late wife, Fernanda, by Rodman Wanamaker. Inspired by the late Dr. Lee Hastings Bristol Jr., then president of the Westminster Choir College and our summer organist, All Saints developed a small but magnificent music program. In 1973, Lee Bristol was instrumental in our obtaining the two-manual, 13-stop, Cassavant tracker organ, which we enjoy today. The organ underwent complete restoration following Hurricane Sandy. 
At the time of restoration, the organ was valued at half a million dollars. It is an extremely rare instrument. The congregation also welcomed the return of the choir to 10.15 a.m. service after our displacement by the storm. Today, our organist and choir director, Richard Ledlam, leads a four-part choir that ranges from 12 to 20 voices. According to church records, 17 baptisms and five funerals were performed during All Saints' first decade. The first wedding was celebrated in August of 1892, followed by three more in 1895 and 1896, including the marriage of Dr. William E. Studdiford to Maria Emlyn Hall, our church organist at the time. Perhaps the most famous wedding in All Saints' early history was that of Ethel C. Peters, granddaughter of a prominent railroad president, to Smedley Darlington Butler on June 30, 1905, with Dr. Christian presiding. Butler was then a captain in the U.S. Marine Corps. He later became the highest ranking officer in the Corps, and at the time of his death was the most decorated Marine in history. During the 1930s, Butler became even more renowned for his championing the right of World War I veterans to their promised back pay. Over the many decades, All Saints has been home not only to descendants of these families, many of whom still maintain summer homes in Bayhead, but to year-round residents of Mantelloking, Point Pleasant, Toms River, Manasquan, Briel, and Seagirt. We are undoubtedly a more socio- and economically diverse group than the original parish, and represent a broad range of professions, including doctors, lawyers, naval engineers, financiers, artists, college professors, carpenters, and business owners, to name a few. Despite our varied backgrounds, we have found a home at All Saints and join in making our most sacred life passages here. It is our tradition to celebrate baptisms during 10:15 a.m. Sunday services, for example, so that we may all welcome the newest members of our parish family. Often, the proud parents of the baptismal candidate joined our parish family when they married here. And since the establishment of the Memorial Garden, All Saints is also a cherished place of rest for the ashes of the departed and for reflection and comfort for their grieving family members. Much has happened at All Saints since 1888. In 2000, we purchased the adjacent residential property south of Bristol Hall, our parish center, at 518 Lake Avenue. Our plan, which succeeded, was to connect the two properties to expand our cramped fellowship space, office area, and Christian education facilities. But even more has changed at All Saints since October 2012, when the church building was ripped from its foundation by Hurricane Sandy. Aptly enough, All Saints Sanctuary was truly saved by the baptismal font in the Northex, which anchored one end of the sanctuary and its connection to Bristol Hall at the other end. The damage, estimated at $2 million, caused the floors to sink and the sanctuary walls to cave in. Water marks and debris on the wainscoting suggested the church had been filled with three or four feet of water. Outside the church, the once charming landscape was buried under four feet of sand. Behind the church, the bulkhead had been torn away and with it about six feet of churchyard. The rectory, though still intact, was rendered uninhabitable. We are indebted to all who supported us during our recovery effort, but most especially to St. Mary's by the Sea, our neighbor parish in Point Pleasant Beach, who enabled us to resume worship in their sanctuary. Amazingly, our parish family held together. Thanks to the quick action by our Buildings and Grounds Committee, parish leadership, general contractor, church insurance company, and generous donors, we were able to begin remediation of our church building, parish hall, and the memorial garden immediately. On December 22, 2013, the Right Reverend William Chip Stokes, Bishop of New Jersey, rededicated and consecrated All Saints during the first Sunday service held in the sanctuary since the storm. He blessed the church and memorial garden with holy water sprinkled from a branch of the stately Christmas tree which had been installed in the Northex the day before. Parishioners and community members alike packed the church to see the restored landmark, and it did not disappoint. The worshippers took their places in the pews. Few noticed that these were not the original pews. 
during the restoration, it became obvious that the 123-year-old pews could not be salvaged. The carpenters used them as patterns to create exact replicas. Being responsible stewards of our environment and our church, we salvaged the wood from the original pews and milled it into the wainscoting that you now see in Bristol Hall and the office areas. Nearly two years later, we still acknowledge how good it is to be home and renew our faith in God to guide us through the next 125 years.